So, welcome all of you. Now, we have started discussing heteronuclear NMR spectra since last class. Of course, we discussed extensively carbon 30. In the last class, I showed you how we can utilize depth and experiment in carbon 30. Three different type of experiments you can do with the last flip angle of the proton as 45 degree, 90 degree and 135 degree. Based on that, we can identify the different carbons attached to different number of protons. And I also showed you how we can utilize this depth experiment in identify the correct structure of some small molecules like monoterpenes. Two such examples we saw. Extending further, we started analyzing the spectrum of other nuclei. We took the example of fluorine NMR. Fluorine is 100 percent abundant, spin off nuclei, very, very friendly nuclei. We started doing that and we analyzed the spectra of many of the molecules. Couple of examples I took. How we can see fluorine fluorine coupling, fluorine proton coupling, and how the multiplicity pattern arises, we understood. And analyze simple example, couple of molecules. And we also analyzed molecule where some other dilute spin can appear and give rise to satellite like in proton spectrum. So, we took the example of mercury uh, containing molecule, where mercury coupling to fluorine appear as satellites on either side. Separation of that, if you measure, you will get mercury fluorine coupling. This is what happened. So, afterwards, another interesting observation I wanted to tell you was the fluorine is very sensitive to isotopic substitution. We took the example of simple molecule difluorobromomethane, where just substitution of bromine 79 81 gives a small change in the uh, chemical shift position because there will be four different types of isotopomers in that molecule corresponding to bromine both in 79 both in both in 81 and 117 other 81 with two such possibilities. We got the statistical distribution of population gives different intensity peaks. Same thing we observed for CFCl3. We CFCl3 is a simple molecule fluorine NMR should give you a single peak, but it gives four peaks of intensity 100, 95, 30 and 3 and this we could explain the intensity pattern based on the statistical distribution of the population of different isotopomers of molecule containing different chlorine. Chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 is there, chlorine 35 76 percent abundant, chlorine 37 24 percent abundant. Find out all the possible different isotopomers present and then we could may, may, uh, get the information and number of populations of each of the isotopomers and statistical distribution of that gives different chemical shifts and we were able to get all the peaks we could assign and also the intensity pattern. Continuing further, today we look at the isotopic effect because of deuterium and another example and a deuterated molecule called vinyl fluoride. We look at this molecule now. For example, in the vinyl fluoride, if, it is, if you take only fluorine without any deuterium substitution, we are going to get a singlet peak. This is a single peak. But there are different deuterate analogs of that. What are the different deuterate analogs? I can show you this is only fluorine, of course, here proton is being decoupled, and here we have a deuterium in this position. Then fluorine coupled to deuterium gives rise three line pattern of equal intensity. I showed you like CdCl3 and the others. When it spin of a nuclei coupled to spin of nuclei, you get three peaks of equal intensity. Again, the deuterium is not cis here it is trans to this fluorine we get three line pattern again and this is deuterium geminal to this fluorine and of course there are two uh, two deuteriums both could be one semi trans one cis one uh, geminal one semi cis and one trans one uh, one geminal one cis varieties of co possible combinations we can see and if you carefully look at it you can understand one thing from this spectrum remember when the deuterium is there in the geminal position, the uh, separation is larger. Then it comes to trans, then comes to cis. What do you understand from that? The J coupling between fluorine and deuterium is larger in the geminal coupling is for geminal coupling than trans, than cis. Is you know it is a completely a reverse phenomena or a different phenomena compared to what we observe in protons. In protons, we saw trans coupling is larger then cis coupling, then geminal coupling. But here you see geminal coupling with fluorine and deuterium is larger than trans than cis. 
this is the phenomena and so two bond chemical shift also uh, is larger more for that of the trans three bond coupling chemical shift than this one similarly j, j coupling j geminal is larger than j trans then j cis so not only chemical shift chemical shift of two bonded is larger than trans three bonded and cis three bond chemical shift that means two bond chemical shift means that is one which is geminal so geminal chemical shift is larger than trans chemical shift than cis chemical shift that's what it is similarly we also got the information about j couplings with this idea we'll see how we get the pattern of course when two deuterium are present one is trans other is cis what is the pattern we get first it is going to be a triplet i mean three line pattern of equal intensity and each of them is split into three three lines because of our second deuterium if you come to this pattern of course geminal coupling as i said is larger that is a first one large three line pattern and each of these line is split into three three line like this that's another one go to the last one geminal and trans geminal coupling is large and trans coupling is next one so this is like this each of them will be three three lines like this multiplicity pattern can be very easily assigned but the only thing is you see the difference in the chemical shift positions each of them because of deuterium substitution whether it is mono substituted deuter di deuter substitution whether it is cis trans and gem, uh, uh, geminal makes a lot of difference in not only appearance pattern but also in the chemical shift positions that's what i wanted to tell you now from this we can get jfd coupling deuterium fluorine coupling can we get deuterium proton fluorine coupling from this of course remember i explained to you when i discussed about the magnetic equivalence hh coupling a deuterium one of the hydrogen atom hd coupling you get and we could get using the ratio of the gammas we can get hh coupling exactly here gamma h and gamma d is up oh, sorry is this one now use this value ratio of the gammas and then get the we measure the fd coupling convert that into this one and you are going to get j fh from measured jfd you can get j fh that's what we are going to get for all the cis trans and other things j fh can be measured here okay that's about fl fluorine we'll continue keep going otherwise there we will be stuck with only one nuclei for a long time let us look at the second nuclei that is phosphorus nmr another friendly nucleus because it is 100% abundance spin half spin half nuclei is always friendly nuclei for us let us see four different types of molecules take an example like this we see the phosphorus nmr of that each of them is coupled to fluorine first one is pcl3 no no fluorine chlorine is a quadrupolar spin generally it won't come we don't couple you ignore it quadrupolar coupling is enormously long it is coupling for that is not seen your pcl3 gives a single peak fine pfcl2 gives a doublet two peak pf2cl cuz two chem fluorine is chemically equivalent gives a triplet pf3 six slowly we are removing one chlorine and adding one chlorine pf3 three fluorines are chemically equivalent makes this phosphorus a quadrat four lines of equal intensity i'm sorry four lines of intensity 1331 is a quadrat okay this is another interesting example it let us look at the analysis and 31p spectrum of this molecule hpf3 in cdcl3 what is the what are the couplings we can see for fluorine and um, for and phosphorus for phosphorus there are two coupling one is phosphorus proton coupling other is fluorine phosphorus coupling there are two types jhp and jfp there are two couplings and jhp coupling is quite large generally that will be a doublet very large coupling that is be a doublet 
and each line is a doublet initially it is going to be a doublet because of j h p coupling and each line is a this thing is going to be a quartet like this some of the quartet lines are overlapped it is going to be a quartet what are these things we can now identify very easily this is j p f coupling one bond that is because of not one bond of course where three uh, flow lines are present is a quartet any two adjacent line of the quartet if you take it will give you p f coupling and what is the h h coupling here h p coupling h p coupling is here see this is h p coupling and subsequent lines you can consider this one you take this to this line that is h p coupling again this to this you take you get h p coupling very easily you can get h p couplings h p couplings are easily obtainable is a doublet and each line of the doublet is a quartet because of this thing so this is how you are going to get two quartets one quartet for one doublet one of the doublets of hp other quartet for other doublet of the hp coupling so this is called quartets of doublet this is a simple molecule it is only not full spectrum partial spectrum is shown here but remember it is proton coupled is very explicitly written here what is the meaning of that now there are two phosphorus both are chemically inequivalent this phosphorus is different this phosphorus is different each of these phosphorus can experience coupling with protons and fluorine the my question is what is this phosphorus this is a partial spectrum of one of the phosphorus i mean partial spectrum of the entire spectrum 31p spectrum pertaining to only one of the phosphorus now this correspond to which phosphorus very interesting to observe first of all you please note this phosphorus can couple to this phosphorus also they are chemically inequivalent so coupling can be there one bond pp h pp coupling is there and then we have two bond hp coupling is there in addition to that we have one two bond pf coupling is also there if you come to this phosphorus one bond hp coupling is there one bond pp coupling is there and one two three bond pf coupling is there each of this fluorine can experience different couplings looking at the pattern i would say this correspond to this phosphorus because this for this phosphorus to have coupling to this three fluorine 1 2 3 4 five bonds away one four bonds away to become a quartet is very weak is quite unlikely that's my first guess so i would say this is for this phosphorus because this phosphorus can experience direct one bond coupling and two bond coupling and also three bond coupling with all the three can be present here so i would say this is this phosphorus and it's it is a direct one bond pp coupling is quite large about approximately 195 hertz it's a doublet it gives us a doublet then what will happen each of this line is split into a septet like pattern because these two fluorines are equivalent to cf3 groups so it it is like six fluorines coupling to this phosphorus 2 into ni plus 1 will rule apply 2 into n is equal to 6 into half plus 1 so it is going to be seven line pattern it is going to be septet pattern this separation is a septet each of this is a septet pattern 1 2 3 4 5 6 you can count there are only seven such lines it is a septet and that coupling separation is 70 hertz that's also fine okay and interestingly and each of this septet line is split into a triplet because of this ch2 proton so this phosphorus experiences three couplings pp coupling is a doublet then it is a septet because of two cf3 groups and it is also a, each line of the septet is a doublet i'm sorry triplet because of ph2 group so this is this is one one septet of triplet for a dub, one of the doublet is another septet of triplet for another doublet so the total pattern is doublet of septet of triplets so this can happen only for this carb phosphorus i hope it is clear for you R let me repeat for this phosphorus this is a one bond coupling is a doublet 
which is here this peak and this peak center of that and each of this doublet splits into seven line pattern and we have to see 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 they, are, they will be overlapped there will be seven line from the center three this side three this side similarly for this three uh, septets here three septets here this septet is coming because of these two CF3 groups that is not all each of the septet is split further by PH2 group that is a triplet. So, it is going to be septet of triplets. So, each doublet is going to be septet of triplets. So, there are two such things ok as I said this is one septet of triplets this is another set of septet of triplets there are two such septet of triplets some of the lines are overlapped here and total pattern is doublet of septet of triplets very easily you can do that. Now, this is the next prosperous obviously, this is the pattern this is something very interesting. How can we get this is again some funny pattern here we will see what it is looks like a quartet of some septet or by quintet like that. How do we get that it is written here remember J P H 2 and J P P is approximately equal to what is J P P here I saw J P P is 195 that means J P H 2 and P A P both are around that order as a consequence what happens one will be a doublet and each letter of the doublet will be a triplet then it can overlap and give us a quartet how remember when we understood the multiplicity pattern we discussed this at stretch look at this one this is this phosphorus triplet of doublet of septet why do we get this one first it is a pH coupling we call it a triplet does not matter then each line of the triplet is a doublet because of this and central lines will overlap and appear like a quartet and each line of the quartet then is now split here because of 2 CF 3s as a septet. So, it is triplet of doublets of septet triplet coupling is slightly larger than this one approximately equal, but this is more little larger as a consequence it is we have to say first triplet coupling is larger as triplet then each line of the triplet is a doublet and each line of this doublet is going to be a septet. So, it is triplet of doublet of septet is the pattern for this phosphorus you understood a simple molecule phosphorus spectrum if you take there will be two groups two chemical sheets one for each phosphorus and the multiplicity pattern is very much different for one of them it is going to be a different pattern doublet of triplet of septets other is different pattern we saw. So, this is how it is we go to the other molecule POCA3 twice how many peaks we expect for this molecule if I do not tell you how many peaks if I do, if you do not read this simply you can count the number of peaks you are going to get 10 lines because all the th 9 pass per protons are equivalent. So, 2 n a plus 1 rule if you apply 2 into 9 into half plus 1 it is going to be 10 peaks are we getting 10 peaks see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 wait are the other peaks one is here one is somewhere here you do not see it very weak in intensity it is 10 line pattern this any of the separation will gives you pH coupling pro phosphorus and proton coupling. Then what are the small small lines which are seen here which is written star here remember this phosphorus can also have a coupling with carbon in natural abundance 1.1 percent obviously that will give satellites and that is what you are seeing phosphorus coupled to carbon is appearing as satellites ok simple other molecule here only one type of uh, proton is there CH 2s, but there are two phosphorus P alpha and B beta. See this P alpha can couple to all the three six protons which are equivalent it will be a seven line pattern from the same T O N I plus one rule and for P beta also it can couple to all the six chemically equivalent protons gives it a seven line pattern, but the coupling strength is slightly different this is about close to 9 hertz this is close to 2.5 hertz and very easily you can say why it is seven line pattern because all the CH 2 protons are equivalent 2 into 6 into half plus 1 
you get seven lane pattern it is a septet pattern like what we saw in the previous example for CF3 which we got septet exactly we are getting seven lane pattern septet and for two pass plus two septets are there and couplings are different so separate separations are different very easily you can even assign this is p beta because this is large coupling is there separation is larger this is p alpha. So, from the coupling from the separation you can make the assignment of each of this phosphorus ok. So, go to this uh, molecule this is something very interesting which I wanted to discuss little bit bit more. This is a molecule where we have phosphorus and silic lithium is also present. Remember lithium has two isotopes lithium 6 and lithium 7. Lithium 7 spin is 3 by 2 lithium 6 is spin 1 we already discussed about boron 3 by 2 and boron 3 here spin is 1 not 3 that is the difference. Boron lithium lithium 7 spin I, I when it is coupled to phosphorus what is the type of uh, prior spectrum you are going to get. Remember it is proton completely decoupled it does not couple to proton only we are looking at lithium phosphorus coupling carbon is very weak natural abundance forget it you will see as satellites. So, when you are looking at phosphorus lithium coupling lithium 7 has abundance 92 percent quite large lithium 6 abundance is 7.4 percent appear like a satellite one appears like abundant spin coupling other appears like a satellite peak which is which we have to understand we will see this and there are two possibilities you can think of one possibility is both the lithium could be 7 that possibility is there when both the lithium is 7 what will happen one lithium splits phosphorus into four lengths of equal intensity that is what we saw for 3 by 2 spin because his spin is 3 by 2 we have 4 lines of equal intensity e 1 1 1 intensity I took it. What does second lithium do? It will split each of these lines into again 4 4 lines from the center I wrote 4 4 lines now add up the intensity it is 1 2 3 4 3 to 1 and that is the pattern you should get when both the lithium are lithium 7 which has spin 3 by 2 when it is coupled to phosphorus you get 7 line pattern of intensity 1 2 3 4 3 to 1 that is exactly what we got here. See here 7 1 2 3 4 3 to 1 this is 7 line pattern coming because of coupling of both the lithium to phosphorus when both the lithiums are in lithium 7 spin state both are lithium 7 then you get this one then what about these small small lines. So, we could explain strong intensity big in big peaks 7 lines 1 1 2 3 4 1 4 3 1 2 3 4 3 2 1 lines intensity pattern we explain when phosphorus is coupled to both the flow with lithium in 3 by 2 state. What about the other one now we will try to understand this one this is very easy of course what is the intensity pattern and both are lithium I said 92 percent abundant both 92 percent abundance if you multiply 85 percent intensity. So, those intensities are 85 percent and the remaining has to be 15 percent ok and you measure the separation there large 7 line pattern any adjacent peak if you measure you, you get the coupling between lithium and phosphorus lithium 7 and phosphorus to be precise that is 45 hertz we, it has been measured you understood the phosphorus now it is coupled to both the lithiums both lithiums could be one could be lithium 7 both other could be lithium 6 and both could be lithium 6 also one other one lithium or the other lithium 6 also possible both lithium 6 is you know abundance is very small we will see that one now in both one is lithium 7 other is lithium 6 what is the probability you can think of when one is lithium 7 that splits into four line patterns equal intensity that we have been discussing because spin 3 by 2. Now, what is happening it is also coupled to lithium 6 what is its spin its spin is 1. So, when spin is 1 each line is split into 3 lines of equal intensity 
that is what we have been explaining discussing in CDCL3, CFC3 everything we discussed in CDCL3 we just showed that deuterium is coupled to spin of it will be 3 lines of equal intensity. So, it will be 3 lines this will be 3 lines this will be 3 lines this will be 3 lines and then this coupling is only 16.7 hertz. As a consequence what happens there will be 12 lines of equal intensity most of them do not overlap with this separation is 45 hertz and this is only from here 16 hertz. So, as a consequence these lines are very well separated the overlap is not there because you see one is here other is here this is 45 hertz and from here they will have 3 lines of 16 hertz. So, there is no question of crossover or overlap with the other peaks all 12 lines should be visible see here see this is if you see that this is one in both are both lithium are 7. Now, we start looking at this peak start looking at this one when one is lithium is 7 other is 6 first it will be 4 line pattern and each line is split into 3 3 like this you see, but unfortunately some are overlapped and you do not see it. See of course, I have highlighted this in green, but you see 3 peaks here 3 if you remove this you will be very clearly see you can see these 3 peaks here 3 peaks here 3 here or 3 here. So, all 12 peaks can be easily assigned and this the adjacent separation of this gives you lithium 6 to lithium phosphorus coupling this is lithium 7 to lithium phosphorus coupling. So, we understand this is a simple molecule spectrum appears very simple, but you need to use the isotopic abundance spins of different isotopes and get the multiplicity pattern to make the assignment. So, we could easily assign both the peaks coming because of coupling to lithium 6 and lithium 7 with phosphorus. So, this is done very easily we could do that next we will go to another simple molecule phosphorus very simple molecule can you imagine a simple molecule this phosphorus I am looking at will give enormously complex spectrum hard to believe right looking at simple molecule and interestingly you should also see nitrogen 15 is labeled what do you mean by labeled we have, we have made it 100 percent otherwise abundance is 0.37 if it is natural abundance we do not bother about it it is a satellite peak we do not even see it with a such a small intensity 0.37 percent abundance we generally ignore it unless you are specifically interested to see the satellites enhance the intensity and acquire for a long date time data you have to acquire for several hours to see that, but it is labeled. So, it is you should treat it like an abundance spin like proton and fluorine and phosphorus. So, nitrogen is also like abundant spin now because of labeling. So, this phosphorus can experience four different couplings one it can experience coupling with proton it can experience coupling with fluorine it can experience coupling with this nitrogen it can also experience coupling with this part this proton four different types of couplings it can experience the pattern is very difficult to and understand and such a simple uh, molecule it can experience four different couplings one heteronuclear another heteronuclear another heteronuclear and then the another heteronuclear. So, three different types of heteronuclear couplings are there for this phosphorus very interesting example I am giving you please understand this one very carefully. Now, we are looking at the phosphorus NMR this phosphorus can have one heteronuclear coupling another heteronuclear coupling another heteronuclear coupling here because of nitrogen labeling and also another heteronuclear coupling like this four different heteronuclear couplings and I have given you the values of this approximately because the analysis has been done I do not want to measure and keep on spending time to analyze the spectrum for you one bond pH coupling this is 836 hertz very very large very large and one bond pf coupling is also large and one bond nitrogen phosphorus coupling that is also quite large 50 hertz and one bond I am sorry not one bond two bond ph coupling h2 to this h2 group can couple to phosphorus that is also quite reasonably large about 12 hertz. 
So all the four couplings are quite reasonable. Especially one band coupling is very large, and this one band PF coupling is very large, and one band PN coupling is also very large. Some have a neg negative sign. Don't worry about that. Th that we will see later. And this is the typical spectrum for the phosphorus. Very interesting. You can see this in in the book. I have taken this from the book of inorganic molecular chemistry. Fantastic book. When you read that, I saw this very interesting example. I have taken from them. I thank the author for you know. I was able to take the spectrum from that book. So very interesting example. Look at this. How do we get this pentosity pattern? Can we explain this? First, let us say this is the chemical sheet of phosphorus. That is well known. It will be always at the center of the multiplicity. Only a single phosphorus center of this multiplicity is the chemical shift, and this is the large separation. Is a doublet, eight hundred thirty-six hertz. I will call it as JPH coupling. Fine, and from this, each of them is coupled to fluorine, and it will be a doublet. Please understand. This is a one doublet. I will say one is here, one is here. This is pH coupling, and each of the uh, doublet is further split by fluorine into doublet, and this is a one doublet. Oh no, I'm sorry, triplet because there are two fluorines, triplet. So one to one triplet is there. So one intercity two and one intercity. This is one triplet. This separation gives you FH, FP coupling. Okay, this is another triplet. Another triplet is because you look at this double this one, one triplet from this one two and one another triplet. You understood the point thing? Let me repeat. This is one doublet because of phosphorus proton coupling, and from the center of this doublet there is a triplet pattern one to one intensity one two and one. This central peak anyway will not change its position. It is there only. This is because of P. Coupling with two equivalent fluorines. Similarly, this also will split into a triplet, and this coupling is again 619. So we got doublet of triplets. Fine. Now we'll expand one of them here. When it is expanded, one of them, there is also P-N coupling. This coupling. There are two nitrogens which are equivalent, so that will split again into a triplet similar to this fluorine. Two nitrogens are splitting this each of this line into. We got doublet of triplets, right? First there was a doublet, and each line is a triplet. So there are six six lines here. Double tap triplet, and each of these six lines here is one, two, three, four, five, six lines. Each of these six lines is split into a triplet because of P-N coupling. Okay, that is one, three, one, one, two, one triplet. Interestingly, this also coupled to two H2s, two two pro equivalent protons. There are four for such pro four protons, two equivalent protons, two to each. Then Each of them is split into a quintet pattern like this. See, two pH coupling is like this: one quintet, one quintet, another quintet. Two. Uh, there are three such things. Very interesting. Le let me repeat it for you to understand how diff how such a simple molecule can give rise to a spectrum. This is center of the chemical sheet of phosphorus. It will double it because of pH coupling. Each line of the double it is split into a triplet because of PF two. And each line of this uh, uh, triplet of doublet is split into another triplet because of P-N coupling, and each line of the triplet is further split into quintet because of two uh, two groups of H2s, so four protons, and that is a quintet. So this is what it is. So what is the total pattern? The oh, total pattern is doublet of triplets of doublets of triplets of triplets of quintets. So doublet. Of triplets of triplets of quint uh, quintet or pentet, whatever you call. So totally, how many peaks we get? Ninety peaks. A simple molecule, one pass pass per spectrum. If you take without doing any decoupling, all of them are coupled. You are going to get 
90 peaks. Very complex spectrum. Still, we can add, interpret the multiplicity pattern. So, I think time is getting up. I am going to stop it here. Today, we discuss a lot about fluid NMR, phosphorus NMR, lots of examples I took. I could analyze the fluorine spectrum of several molecules. I showed you isotopic effect, especially with chlorine substitution, CFCl3, deuterium substitution of uh, vinyl fluoride molecule with a deuterium single monodeuter substitution, dideuto substitution in the ortho position, uh, in the uh, cis position, uh, geminal position, or tra or trans position, and how the coupling varies. And I showed you geminal coupling of FD is larger than is than trans. So, this part uh, we also observed that and we measured the chemical shift also how the chemical shifts are changing the isotropic effect very good very easily we could see. And I took the example of another molecule PCL you know uh, how different fluorines coupled to different types of flu uh, fluorine present gave rise to a septate from the septate separation I could measure identify the phosphorus. Now, in the another example of a molecule like this we have plenty of things phosphorus coupled to proton, two equivalent fluorines, two, two equivalent nitrogens and four equivalent protons and we got 90 lines and if part, uh, pattern was doublet of triplet of triplet of quintets fantastic and if you have the idea of how the pattern comes we can make the assignment. So, this is what I am uh, wanted to explain to you I will stop here already I take a lot of time today we will continue with the discussions in the subsequent classes for not only as one or two example of phosphorus and some other heteronuclear. Thank you very much.